Hi, good Soma. Morning. Good afternoon. Is it good afternoon already? Oh, yes. It That's is. It is it one is. minute after <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> oh, how are you doing, Arun? I'm good. I'm very good. Thanks. How is everything uh, at, in Sydney? Well, yes, Sydney is good. The weather is lovely after very hot days. I think we all the Sydney siders are really enjoying it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Melbourne is really nice today as well. Mm, all right. So today we're going to talk about the second um, Kanban change management principle, which is uh, a great to incremental and evolutionary uh, change. Yes. Gaining agreement within the team. Yes. Or whoever is part of the team. That's right. So. All right. So can you tell I, us a little bit about this principle, how that principle can help with introducing a change? Hmm. So um, you might have heard the word transformation of change too many times, but whenever we use words like that, it sometimes have a negative impact on people because um, whenever especially change so change is associated with change fatigue as well like whenever we mm -hmm. say oh, okay we need to change the first thing that comes to anyone's mind is that we are not good enough what mm. is happening uh same goes for transformation like even though in nature transformation means something different but when it comes to the human world and especially the corporate world uh whenever we say transformation there is a like big changes are associated with it and mostly it has negative impact on people. So mm. that is the reason um, the second principle of change management is really, really important, where we are gaining agreement to pursue improvement uh, through evolutionary change. Now the mm. word the word here is evolutionary. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a change in here, but the evolutionary, when, the moment we say evolutionary, it means that we are agreeing to like take small initiative and most mm. of them are free and when we do that like something that is not going to impact a lot in a team so for example i would say like how we read the board in kanban you know yes. from right to left. instead of reading the board or in your stand-ups from left to right if you start reading it from right to left it's not a big deal for mm -hmm. many people many teams but again, when you start doing that, you can see a huge shift in the mindset. Yes. So that would be one of the experiment a team is trying to do when they are, uh, they have too many things in their in progress column. Sure. So that is something I would call an example of evolutionary change. So what it means basically is that you start with small initiative, which are mm -hmm. risk free. You do them. You, but you agree, you agree with the team that, mm -hmm. hey guys, can we do this together? And then you check for the result. You understand and you assess the result. Mm -hmm. So if that practice is going, like is benefiting the whole team, then that's yeah. where the motivation comes from. And then you go to the next step. Okay. So this principle, uh, as you highlighted, has two key words. One is agreement and the other one is evolve over time. Um, I like to kind of compare this principle, especially the evolutionary change management and compare it with the revolutionary change management, which we normally used and we normally use this approach um so you talk about uh you know start with a small change and small initiative to reduce the risk i like to talk a little bit about the uh people's resistance so mm -hmm. when we introduce a, a big change right so we want to make a revolution so basically break everything that you all already have and mm -hmm. build something perfect from scratch right that's what i mean by revolutionary change uh people resist because the system that we are working in yeah. or working with 
designed and created by different people. When we go somewhere to a team or organization and say, everything that you've done doesn't work. Uh, and I know all the solution. So let's drop everything you currently doing and let's create something perfect from scratch. Then two things happen. One is maybe indirectly we blame the people who design this system because we said the system you design doesn't work. Another thing is we introduce a very big change yeah. and uh, it takes time for people to adapt and learn and that causes confusion and people resist. So this change management principle can help to reduce the risk. People yeah. agreed, people involved in the new change, whatever it is. And we start with something small that people comfortable with and people ready to accept it. Yes, yes. Yeah? Uh, when you are talking about this, there's another word I would like to highlight, which is not mm. part of the principle directly, but we do use this a lot as coaches. That's mm -hmm. either we say co-design or co-create. Mm -hmm. That has the same impact because um, when we talk about improvement, it is not always that something that is not working, that's why we want to improve. Mm. It is more about being adaptive and resilient and match mm -hmm. your surrounding. So the moment, as you mentioned, right, like change, transformations, those has a very big impact on people's mind and their psychology. And the percentage of unlearning is huge mm -hmm. when we evolutionary change because we are coming in we are saying that hey whatever you were working on or whatever you were doing is not going to work anymore so learn this the new different way and the moment we say learn that is like a lot of unlearning also happens at the same time yes. because that's how our brain works that we have to unlearn something and then relearn something different and unlearning is tougher than mm -hmm. learning something. Yeah. So that's where what evolutionary change does is that you are introducing something new, but you are not getting rid of the old thing at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Yes. Because you let the human mind and the human brain decide that which one is useless in the current mm. function. You decide. These are the options. Let's try it. And then you decide. Like, for example, what we were talking about, you know, reading the board. Mm -hmm. At any given moment, you can always start reading the board again from left to right. There's no harm or no like objection to that. Like, you know, no one is going to stop you. Yes. But when you start doing it from right to left, and if you can see the benefit of that, then your brain will decide that, okay, maybe reading the board from left to right is not effective anymore in the current scenario. So I mm -hmm. shouldn't be doing. It. Yes. So when we do in this way, the the impact of unlearning reduces because you're not taking it away immediately. You are letting the brain choose which exactly. one is more important or more valuable in the current context. Let's go in that way. And when you do that, it takes away the, the what do you say, the change fatigue or fear from mm -hmm. people because they are not unlearning immediately. Exactly. They are more and not unlearning a lot of things. Right. Maybe exactly. they unlearn something small. Um, and another thing is that, you know, the change that we introduce, mm -hmm. is this actually going to solve the problem they have? And uh, or we think that it solved the problem that we think they have. You know, yes. that's I think two different uh, things. Yes, because when people yeah. exactly when people agree that there is a problem, this is a problem. We agree yeah. this is a problem, and we think we can do this, right? Then they, you know, they they happy to accept that change. But sometimes we go to the team or organization and say you need to work completely differently. Uh, but they say, but that's not our problem, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I agree. And that is another side to this principle, right? Like, we don't have the solution with mm. us. Because 
the problem sometimes understanding the problem is more important than coming up with a solution yes so when you go through this process like the evolutionary change process you are unrevealing the problem layer by layer and in today's world nothing is linear mm -hmm. we won't find a straightforward problem like being thrown at our faces saying hey solve this that's mm -hmm. that doesn't happen anymore sometimes things are so complex it's it's the system it's you know the people the dynamics and everything coming together there are multiple factors to it and there are multiple layers through it so revolutionary change might not work in those scenarios but the moment you do those changes without asking the people to agree or co-design or co-create you lose the trust that is mm. the first thing that happens so i'm going to a team and i'm like hey guys we are not doing scrum anymore yes let's do kanban that is that has happened right like i'm sure yeah. with most of us mm -hmm. those things are some of the examples which had happened the first thing the resistance that we get why mm -hmm. why do we have to stop doing scrum and do something totally different when we are doing something different that means that we have to change our cadences yeah we have to change even even if they're not happy with the current way exactly. of doing scrum or whatever yes. as soon as yes. you say don't do this yes. do that they say no 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 we don't want to do it we're happy with exactly. the scrum or yes. whatever yeah. yes yeah. even though yeah that is their biggest pain point that could be yeah. but they like no, no no we don't want and that is really true because we are not inviting them to mm. agree or align and you know help us to co-create the solution. We're yeah. just throwing it off to them like, hey, I am the expert here, so you'll mm. be doing whatever you want to say. Exactly. So this is what and yeah, in... whenever this happens, that's the mm -hmm. biggest mistake that we have seen in real life, and that has caused a lot of problems exactly uh, and another thing i wanted to talk uh, about the evolutionary change management and probably the benefit as you mentioned reduce the risk is any change involves some sort of cost right so either yeah. we need to actually invest some money or it's time right but either way it costs us when we introduce a very big change to a team or organization we need to invest a lot of time and money yep. and the risk that it fails it's a lot because if it fails then we lose a lot but if we introduce a small change based on the team and people and organization readiness and acceptance then we reduce this cost and also the chance that this works is higher so we reduce the basically cost and loss and uh, consequently we increase the chance of the success. That's a really good point because that there's another thing that's involved with evolutionary change is that if your hypothesis fails at any given mm. point, you think that, you know, we should be doing this experiment. It's a small one, but after you have done that, you found out that it, it is not working. What, like, yes. like you know, based on your expectation, mm. you can always revert back and try something different because Absolutely. you haven't invested a lot of time or money in yes. implementing. And that's one of the biggest, biggest benefit of doing this. And mm. there are actually countries out there, yeah. you know, some countries who cannot invest upfront money. Mm -hmm. They try this instead of that's doing... Right. A big bang kind of transformation where revolutionary changes are like you know usually applied yeah. this, this is what do because the moment we say we are designing a future state and we yeah. fix on it let's say today in like today's time it's february you and i decide that okay our future state after one year would be that x mm. in six months time a lot will change mm -hmm. there a lot of changes among us also our surroundings so whatever the future state that we are talking about might not be even relevant mm. also we have already invested upfront money our sunk cost bias would be like too high and we both will be like no let's do it it will work it will work 
So yeah. after six months, let's say, you know, we go till ninth month. And That's then we right. find out that, oh shit, this is not yeah. going to work. And anymore. surprisingly, this principle is quite aligned with agile values, responding to change over following the plan. Because a lot of times the, in this, you know, agile transformation, we have a fixed plan for yes. next year or something, yeah. and we stick to that plan. But this one, you know, when you introduce small changes, you can pivot, you can change direction based on people's response or anything that happens. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's all about reducing risk in businesses. But at the same time, I feel this is more human because we are also getting the humans, that's the people, that's part of yeah. the journey, in the journey and taking them along with us. Mm. So we are respecting their skill set, um, their experience and asking them to co-design that, hey, we are not going to tell you what would work. Let's all get together and agree that what is the next experiment we are going to do mm -hmm. and it's it reduces risk not only in terms of money but also in terms of people you know what well, i mean people's like, are money right people's oh, times is money well yeah. in in some places they might disagree with that statement but yes i totally agree they are the huge asset that the yeah. biggest but. If we look at money as something to represent the value of our life or time, I guess uh, I think uh, time is money. Anyway, uh, so if we want to kind of summarize what we discuss about uh, uh, in this episode, so we talk about this, uh, the second principles of Kanban change management agreed uh, um to introduce incremental and evolutionary uh, change. So we talk about that by using this principle, we can reduce the risk of change. We can uh, basically get people involved in designing a change and introducing the change. So basically change comes from the people who will be impacted rather than someone outsider come with a solution. Yeah. Uh, it helps people and organization to uh, respond to the changes quicker. Uh, mm -hmm. What else we talk? I think I would just um, throw in another word. Like mm -hmm. we um, apply this principle. We also give the ownership of the change to people. Mm -hmm. Very so good. Very important, I believe. Yes. Because that is something is lacking whenever we see changes happens in big bang because mm. it's you know, like a one team or usually one person is actually accountable for the change but then mm. you have to change a thousand people you know what i mean exactly yeah so and people see people see that they have a voice you know maybe yes. not maybe we don't uh exactly do what they say but they had a voice they had the opportunity yeah. to uh raise their opinion and we might try this time. If not, maybe try next time. Exactly. Yes. All exactly. right. Very good. Okay. So I guess uh, we can wrap up this uh, episode. Yes. And yes. Uh, thanks, everyone. I would uh, recommend to uh, follow us on YouTube. Uh, if you're listening on podcast, please uh, follow and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, we try to... Uh, do more interactive session on YouTube uh, from now. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Soma. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, Arod. Thanks. Uh, we come back next week with another principle of Kanban yeah. change management. Yes. <laughs>